Hey y'all, this is Dakota with Holman's Outdoor Solutions, based out of Leesville, South Carolina. And I'm gonna be making some videos, all forestry mulching related, on different topics. Um, some stuff I don't see anyone talking about on YouTube about, things like that. I've got years of experience in the mulching world um, ever since 2016. September of 2016 is when I started getting my feet wet in the mulching world. So that's a little overview of how far back I've been in the mulching industry. So this first topic I'm going to cover is one that's actually affected me um, badly right now. And this is something if you're wanting to start a mulching business in 2024 that you really, really need to focus on before you even buy anything and really you should focus on with any business but with mulching it's a high startup cost and you're going to shell out a lot of money up front it's not like a low cost business it's a high running cost business so this thing that you need to worry about and think about real hard is your target audience there we go target audience so two years ago my target audience was a lot bigger than it is now um, one thing that plays a part of that is inflation and the economy people's wallets aren't so big anymore and mulching work is expensive you can't go out to a job and charge a few hundred bucks. People can afford that, but you can. You'll go out of business your first job if you charge that little amount. Um, so my audience has shrunken. Before, I used to have a lot more people and customers that could afford it, but nowadays in 24, the inflation has just gotten really bad. People need money for gas, fuel, the daily necessities, food, um, their bills that they got to pay. And then putting that little backyard mulching job um, on the back burner is something a lot of people might wind up doing. So you have to think about your target audience in your area where you live do you have a lot of mulching going on you can ride around and look and see if there's mulching going on if you ride through a rural area and you don't see any clearing getting done no mulching getting done there's probably not money in that area there's not customers in that area that can afford it so probably in that area, unless somebody out of ordinary moves there and needs some work done, you probably aren't gonna get any work done there. Um, if you live, say, in a city, um, it's very urban. There's not hardly any forests or land around. You might have some overgrown backyards. That might be your only business there. But that's something else you got to think about. Um, if you live in a, uh, I would say a partially rural area that's starting to become more urban, you might have some good luck there. There might be some uh, money customers there. But, you know, way out in the country where there's nothing there, <laughs> Um, around here anyways there's no money out there unless like I said somebody from 
um, say out of state moves in and they're wanting to build their house on 50 acres or whatever, that might be a good customer for you. A good residential job. Um, residential work in the mulching world in my area it's gone down, it's affected me, um, and I've, I've never done any commercial work, I've never gotten any contact for any of that kind of stuff. All my customers over the years has been residential, and I've had a few repeat customers, great ones, that have given me a lot of business, but I might have one, two, maybe three of those types. So, the point of this video is to really think about your target audience in your area. Are you set up to travel far out to go get more jobs that are, you know, two hours away, two and a half hours away? Are you willing to stay in a hotel or sleep in your truck to stay there on the job site? Or are you also willing to drive back to your house all that ways every day and then go back you'll have to figure that into your cost of the job I'm sure you'll figure that in because that's a lot of gas and fuel money there and wear and tear on your vehicle and tires drive chain and what not so um, for me I'm not set up to do that I have a older dump truck and trailer and I've driven it hour and 45 minutes away one way a few well one time a few times actually but it's very uncomfortable and I don't like driving it far out I try to stay as local as possible but if you have a, a pickup truck with a gooseneck it's comfortable to drive you're able to drive far out to get jobs and have at it go to it um, you gotta think about your family too if you have a family a uh, children a spouse you gotta think about them too so that's something that I've been thinking real hard about here in the past couple of months as it's been affecting me more and more is target audience really think about that before you invest in any kind of business especially a mulching business are your customers going to be mainly commercial? You got commercial contacts. If you do, that'll help you out a lot. A lot, a lot. There's a lot of money in commercial work. Residential, nowhere near as much. So, just think about that. If you buy a used setup, Depending on how well it's been taken care of, it might be a lower investment up front, but possibly later down the road be more of a bigger investment. That's another topic though. So think about your target audience. Hope y'all enjoyed this video. I'm gonna pass along some more information I got. Stay tuned for more topics. Um, one of those topics is gonna be a used mulcher setup versus a new mulcher setup. Um, I have uh, carbide teeth versus planar knife teeth. That's another topic I'll talk about. I'll talk about forestry debris kits. That's a mistake I regret making on my machine. Um, whether or not you should get one of those kits um, up front buying a new machine uh, so that's three more I got to talk about and there'll be more um, low flow versus high flow mulching setups I've got experience with both because I've owned both setups low and high flow so stay tuned subscribe if you will you have a good one